Can you tell us how you became involved with the breeding and training of Doberman Pinschers? Well, Jack Healy, who I'm sure that if anybody's picked up a dog world in the last 50 years has seen his picture in almost every issue, was actually the founder of this company and started his program immediately with Dobermans. He was so impressed with their usage in World War II that he really wanted to, to bring the benefits of the dog to the broad spectrum in the U.S. And then he and my husband, Jim Salva, became partners 15 years into that and decided that they would expand the program to accommodate, they were just training dogs at the time for protection work, outsiders, decided that they would expand the program and set it up so that they would actually supply their own animals for sale. And it's a very, uh, very comprehensive program that we use. Basically, because Mr. Healy actually obtained a federal grant after his service to study wild dog behavior. When he came back, he produced a copywritten training procedure that's from birth forward. And it encompasses everything that we use here and the only techniques that we use here at the Academy. Watch. Watch. In 1880, in the German province of Thuringia, Carl Louis Doberman, a local tax and rent collector and dog warden, set about to create a superb guard dog that we know today as a Doberman Pinscher. Doberman did not keep records, so the various breeds used by him to create the Doberman is subject to debate. However, it is believed that the Rottweiler, German Short-Haired Pinscher, the Weimarammer, the Manchester Terrier, Great Dane, and the Greyhound contributed to the makeup of today's Doberman Pinscher. What we look for in trying to achieve is physical soundness. Uh, what I mean by that is an animal that is not displaying some of the typical genetic problems that can occur, like uh, cardiomyopathy or dysplasia, those things. You look for an animal, for instance, breed standard 
for your male doby should be 27 to 28 inches. Females should be 25 to 25 and a half inches. For us, we don't feel that you should inhibit the genetic pattern at all, so we don't do that in our breeding program. What we do is not try and stay within AKC standards because we're not competing with dogs inside show for best of breed. We breed for health, longevity, and the way you do that is no inbreeding or line breeding. What type of care and maintenance does the Doberman Pinscher need relating to grooming and exercise? They're a very low maintenance animal when it comes to comparably. Their coat is such that if the animals are bathed once a week and kept in, a, in the proper environment, and the biggest thing about Doberman's environment is not to give them too much exposure to cold, extreme cold temperatures. Uh, if you do that and you attend to the animal on a regular basis, is keeping his nutritional balance good, exercise can be kept to a minimal. A lot of people think that the best thing to do to slow a dog down is to exercise them. In fact, if you put too much time in the exercise portion of it, you'll bring up the stamina of the dog. So instead of correcting your problem, you're compounding your problem. In recent years, some Dobermans have picked up a reputation for not being a very adaptable dog. For our animals, we give them proper socialization and exposure from a young age forward practically from birth forward. So anything that you bring with inside the animal's environment, they can adapt to. Dobermans are exceedingly intelligent animals and they want to please. The desire to please within the breed is incredible. So it makes them very adaptable. Georgia, what health concerns have you seen regarding the Doberman Pinscher that occasionally come about? Well, there are a number of different conditions that we do to try and make sure that are nowhere in your breeding program or nowhere in your lines. One, uh, it can be from a condition that dobies are very given to with the eyelashes. The eyelashes are actually turned in on the eye. Creates a, a severe problem with the animal. It usually has to be reversed with surgery. Of course, you tend to see a lot of, a lot of uh, dysplasia, but not in your hips as much as in your front elbows. Sometimes in the hock, but usually the front elbows. And then, of course, you do have now, with, unfortunately, with the advent of adding color breedings, like your delusions and your whites, you pick up cardiomyopathy, which is a pretty severe problem. The general quality of the Doberman as a top protection breed in general has gone downhill in the last 10 to 20 years. It is to the point now that many people don't even consider it to be a protection dog. What are some of the reasons for the decline of the Doberman Pinscher? Out. Well, that's pretty simple. You had two ends of the spectrum causing a problem within the breed. One, you have your show breeders that are very concerned with appearance, that are doing a heavy amount of inbreeding and line breeding to accomplish what they want to say, the refinement in the head, uh, the proper top line. The other end of the spectrum that damages it is your backyard breeders that just overbred, literally. And they were breeding your brothers and sisters. They were, you know, you, you name the rule, they would break it. You know, when you have a saturation because of popularity, everybody wants to make money as a result of it. You don't take into consideration how to properly breed the animal. Many people that feel if they buy a Doberman from AKC registered championship bloodlines that it still has the ability to become a good protection dog. Are they right in this line of thinking? Well, training is, is a very important part, environmental raising and training. But to be honest with you, most of the show dogs that we see, most of the Dobies in the show ring, 
really have, they're either super, super aggressive to the extent they're such fear biters that you can't put a good stable protection foundation in them, or the other extreme is that they have no aggression at all. And unfortunately, you see both personalities pretty heavily displayed within the breed. What are the differences between the male and the female Doberman? Uh, with your Dobies, you can look for the first line key. Your males tend to be much with their protection. Their females are excellent with their protection, but their reactivity to other animals, their patience with small children. For instance, uh, with, for us, if you come to us with, with a child under the age of five and you want to buy a Doby, we'll only sell you a female. We will not place a male Doby in a home with a child with a five, not an adult. Now, if you're buying a puppy from us and you're going to raise it, no problem. But the breed standard tells you if you know the animal at all, that the female is more stable around children consistently. They're excellent. The same, just as an aside, the same is directly opposite of the shepherd. If somebody comes to us with a child under five and wants to purchase already protection trained German shepherd, we only sell them the males because it's the exact reverse. Down, heel, sit, down, heel, no heel, good puppy. Sit. What is the trainability of the Doberman Pinscher? I've heard some people say they have a difficult time training, that they train well for only one master. I don't think that there is a much more intelligent animal that you'll work with out there. As long as the animal is good and sound, you don't have any neuroses from inbreeding, you're going to find the, the trainability and the time involved is so much less. It's incredible how smart the animals are, how fast they learn. And the big thing with the dobies is that they want to please. They live to please. Uh, the consistency in the theory that the dobies are just one person individuals it's not, it doesn't really hold true. You know, they are, it's true that they're going to lock and bond heavily into one primary person, but they are certainly going to be just as affectionate and loyal and protective of the rest of the family. do it right. What we do is we, we do blood testing, try and eliminate major problems that might occur. We don't do any line breeding or inbreeding. We breed for health and longevity. And so we utilize breeding homes. And as a result of that, we have the ability to just raise specific, a specific number of litters per home with proper handling. Just to give you an idea, our puppies are whelped in 90 degree rooms. They're hand whelped so that the handler can coat the bitch's nipples in human perspiration. We scent the puppies with human breath immediately. First primary scent is human, not canine. And if once you establish that forward, then you've got the basic foundation for stability that you need so you can do proper protection work. 
What are your, some of your general thoughts on protection dogs? Well, we don't, we don't want any 90 day wonders out there and we wish nobody produced them. What we do, we wait till the animal's 10 months of age to start his protection work, somewhere between the very youngest nine months. We don't use any form of shock collars, no form of pinch collars, and we do not strike the dogs in yeah. agitation. We literally make agitation and the learning of agitation and protection work a game for the dogs. They live for it. If you watch them, they're so up. Then you teach, you using our copywritten training procedure, it gives you the ability to teach the animals to meet aggression with aggression. When the threat ceases, the animal postures himself back to a seized position. When you can put those things into an animal without causing any damage while along the way, taking enough time to do it the right way, then the end result is a completely stable, child-proof, I don't care how small the child is, fierce protector. But they're, they're pet protectors, and that's what we're looking for. That's the way everyone should be that's done out there. At least that way your private sector is protected. What do you require of a buyer who wishes to purchase a dog from you? We want people that are really serious about their animal. We want them to, if we know the animal's going to be a part of the family, we don't breed yard dogs. We don't want yard dogs. We want our animals to be kept inside. That's not to say that we won't train perimeter dogs, but again, we have to know that the animal's going to be maintained in a proper environment and well cared for. They all need affection. They all look for the bond. So we want, we want to screen our people to make sure that it's going to be an enjoyable, happy atmosphere for our dog as well as it will be a mutual relationship of benefit for the new owner. I often hear many dog owners say, my dog doesn't need any personal protection training. If the need arises, my dog will protect me naturally. Mindset of thinking. Okay. Do you know that there are no recorded attacks of man from wolf, they'll attack livestock, what have you? Take it all the way back because that's what you're dealing with. The animal, just because an animal will advance and bark does not mean that he knows how to posture himself to bite and to protect or to be a man stopper. It's one thing to alert and it's one thing to sound tough. To actually be able to do the job is a whole different story. If you watch, whenever you watch uh, nature clips or what have you of the wolf, notice the way they're, they're advancing and retreating, advancing and retreating. Uh, whenever they're going in, even when they strike another animal, they are, have that constant insecurity that pulls them back to retreat. That's what you have to, you have to put the confidence and the training into the animal for. So it's a controlled situation. They know to stand their ground. They know to go forward for the bite if it's necessary. And they know when to shut down accordingly. But unless you give them that education, you may get a lot of noise, but there's a real, real good chance you'll never get the bite or the follow through to actually stop an intruder. We do a lot of outside sales, out of the country sales. We do a lot of um, security animals, police departments, fire, arson dogs, that type thing. We also do, you know, we, we, our puppies are available with obedience training. Moreover than that, we also offer a trainer's course, and it's a registered trainer's course which entails three weeks of very intense, comprehensive training. We only take two students at a time, and the end result is a full spectrum education. We usually produce about 30 trainers a year, and they're all over the country, including this just in the last six months. We've done six students from Turkey. Just to give you an example, all coming to us at different times from different sources, but all from Turkey. We're trying always to expand the consciousness of the Doberman and of properly handled, properly raised protection animals worldwide, not just US-wide. Mr. Healy supplied dogs for years to the Philippines. My husband has supplied dogs to just about every smaller country for, for security work. Uh, 15 at last count. Um, sort of what we do is try and cover it all. I'd like to thank Master Trainer Richard Connors and the entire staff at the United States Canine Academy for their help in producing this breed segment.